There we go. God. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat. I believe it's episode... Oh, it's episode... No, it's episode 75. Uh, I brought is the wrong question, one here. Is the intros always this bad, or is it just yes, when I'm on Yes, every show? time. But no one's okay. here to listen to them except Halucha, and all is forgiven with Halucha. Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about all sorts of wonderful things. Joining me this week in a surprise turnaround, uh, it's Ian Gibson. Hi, welcome. Let's talk about bad game press conferences. Oh my goodness, David is in the chat. Wild. Uh, also joining us, Ew. David's uh, partner um, in crime, Zach from Save Data. Uh, I hate to say this, folks. I'm about to agree with Ian Gibson. This is a bad conference. <laughs> Look, uh, I just... I. <laughs> I want to hold this back, but I have to say it because I just fucking watched it. The Devolver Digital shows continue to be amazing. And the one they dropped tonight was like literally like 90% bangers. Yeah. And it was in, it was out. It was incredible. If you haven't seen it, you absolutely need to watch it. It was literally 10 times better than the two hour long Summer Games Fest. It was incredible. Yeah, the Summer Games Fest, I was like, hey, um, we're just having commercial breaks now where Nintendo is advertising games coming out tomorrow <laughs> but i i don't know if they did that last summer game fest but they've been doing that for the game awards for oh, years yeah. i told you that shows, i i feel like the problem i have i i feel like okay i've had my problems with jeff Keeley. i have talked to jeff Keeley on twitter about this and called him out and he has responded and like look the the big problem i have is when i watch a playstation or an xbox press conference they are doing their best to like shovel their own shit at me Right. To be like, this is amazing. Like they are hyping it up, but that's their fucking job. Right. That's their job to increase the company's bottom line by over hyping the stuff they are selling. Jeff Keighley is not getting paid by these companies. So why is he shoveling their shit so hard down our throat? Uh, like, Ian, what are you talking about? He literally is being paid by those companies. Oh, is it? But no. He, he, has, yes. he has sponsors for the commercials, but it's not you like think, he's getting paid by the Sony. the screen floor that he stood on top of and the screen yeah, the volume from Disney? From God he on has, high? He has advertisers, but he's not getting paid by Sony to show Last of Us. Then who's paying Jeff Keighley? He's getting paid off the advertising. But my point is that he shouldn't be hyping these game reveals and trailers so much up as a third-party person presenting a show about video games. Like, it's okay if the company does it because it's part of their bottom line. But him being, like, literally a corporate shill for every single game that's up there, it, it just feels bad. Like, yeah, there's a way to present it properly. I and fucking he's not hate, doing it. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll throw a goddamn Molotov cocktail at Capitalism any day of the week. This dude's got to take the advertising. That's not what kills me. What kills me is the fucking pacing of the show when he's going to sit there and talk 10 goddamn minutes to a developer on stage yeah. when they just, all they need to do is show the trailer, be like, that's our game coming this time. Goodbye. Exactly. Like, to, be, oh. to be clear, I totally understand the advertising. I understand the advertising breaks, but like his, like you said, his pacing, the yeah. amount of time he's he's giving to games that really don't deserve the stage, and like let's throw in Game Awards because it's basically the same show. The amount of disrespect he shows to nominees and award categories and current developers to prioritize marketing for future games is incredibly disrespectful to the industry, and the fact that he's doing that. It's just, it's bonkers. It's it's messed up. And I'm sick and tired of it. And I hope everybody else is as well. Because that show today was just like two hours of tepid bath water, as far as I'm concerned. But Damn, was it tepid hot. gamer girl bath water? Hot. No, it wasn't even that good. No, and I had <laughs> four bottles. Um, I will say, uh, now that we've gotten into it a little bit, uh, the show was awful and horrible. Uh, also, it seemed like all the guests didn't, know they were going to be on camera and then he like Fucking paused to let David. them talk they would start talking and then he would start talking it's yeah. like what is happening right now we're not on a zoom call david in the chat the Fuck it, I love when I agree with Ian on the short version, then he expands and I don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the, the the lady from war from uh, warframe she did a real good job that was a nice conversation yeah. piece but the rest of it was awkward it also felt like it, it was neil Druckmann that was on right yeah he, his um, microphone it, put it up to your mouth sir <laughs> not just that but it felt like it felt like there was some not so hidden tension between him and sony like he, oh dude he was oh, he pissed, was pissed. But yes. it also feels like it also feels like he uh, like i'm reading way too into this but it also felt like he's just like 
Yeah, here's Last of Us. I guess we did some stuff for it, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, and I'm excited for the show, but like, there was not like the normal love for Sony that he puts out there. No, and I'm... outside of the leak, it was just like, that relationship feels a little bit toxic. That's that's definitely some rumor that I'm putting out there. Yeah, but... I, mean, now, now, I mean, now he's getting to work with HBO on a fucking television show. Maybe he doesn't want to make video games anymore. Also, you know? the show yeah. ender was leaked by Sony this morning. Yes, <laughs> incredibly unfortunate. Yes. Leaked enough no, I, that we had a conversation at work. It's like, do do we put the do? I downloaded the trailer and I said, do we put you this out? Put it out early? Like do like as a like do the we put this gone. out? And then everyone else put it out. So we're like, I guess we put it out. Plus that what? stuff that stuff wasn't Jason Schreier that had the article like a year ago saying, hey, they they people pitched a new project and they said no you're going to work on last of us part one remaster. And they were upset about it. That was an article like a year ago from Jason. Uh, so what isn't even that big of a reveal? I, I don't think that, I mean, I could be remembering this wrong. I don't think it was naughty dog that was mad about having to make remake a uh, last of us part one. It was Sony bend. Yes. Who wanted yes. to make a, another game yeah. or a sequel. No, to They wanted to make a sequel to days gone. Days That's gone. And yeah. then they were like, no, we're going to have you just remake this old game. And then yeah. naughty dog was like, Hey, but actually, yes, right. we want to work on our own game. We don't want anybody else to touch. Yes, the Last of Us. This is our baby. Which, hey, I do get that. So Can then I... they stepped in. So Ben's just like the fucking redheaded stepchild <laughs> at this point, which sucks. And uh, then it turns out Days no Gone sold Days pretty well on PC. So yeah, it's like, yeah. I, what? What fucking magic did Jeff Keighley pull to have Last of Us Part One remaster, whatever the hell they're calling it, a remake on? his show and not the state of play a week ago like that would have been perfect in the state of play my my it's counterpoint weird. to that is state of, the state of play was focused on a lot of third party stuff yeah. but i don't think I, they're having Zach, another one i i think that's a valid argument for state of play but it wasn't a state of a play it's basically their fucking e3 press conference and Here's you gotta put bangers in no that. no because they they still do uh like uh, they they have shows that aren't state of plays that are like a save data or sorry save data <laughs> PlayStation <laughs> All like, right. pl presentation. Sorry, not trying to plug my own shit here. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, but also, I, don't they, do they did it something the week, last year. Don't do it a week a close. To yeah, don't. Yeah, when you do it that close to E three, I don't care if you say state of play. That's your E three presser. Yeah. Period. I do. I do. I do somewhat agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, look, I'm sorry. I'm coming in hot and heavy tonight. You're coming in hot. Two things. So let's. Number one. Number one. I miss E3. We've been what? E3. Last E3 was 2019. 2020. Was 2020 the, the digital E3? E3 or they just... It's been 50 years. It feels like it. And the thing is, like, no, they're people had very year, valid complaints. They had valid complaints about E3, but E3 solidified things and raised the stakes, and we've lost that. And now you have Sony putting out a state of play that was okay. I wasn't crazy about it, but it was not E3 stage when it should have been. And now you got Summer Game Fest, which is coming in and being like, we're the new E3, and then they put out that shit. And it's like, you just maybe watch two hours of mediocreness. Here's, I'm here's, just, I want E3 here's back. My, I want E3 here's, back. My, here's my theory on why this was kind of booty. Uh, I mean, obviously, he couldn't get a lot of cool announcements. It was also packaged pretty poorly, which we, we've already kind yeah. of talked about that. But uh, I think what was originally going to kill E3 was like, oh, you know, Nintendo split off started doing directs, and they're like, hey, this this does just as well. This actually does better for us and we can control the message yeah. more and it's not boring old men talking on a stage. I mean, especially after Reggie left. Uh, but like, they realized, hey, this is better for us to do it this way. Sony started getting in on that. Now the only one that's left is Xbox. And I mean, hell, even fucking uh, Embracer Group had their own last year and it was fucking <laughs> dog shit, but, but they still got it out there. That. But you're forgetting, you're forgetting like, like, those are valid they don't points. Have to come to somebody like E3 or Jeff Keighley. They can do their those, own thing. Those are valid points you know, for E3 as a physical show. Mm -hmm. But they still put out press conferences in that two week period because they yep. felt the stakes. And that's what I'm talking about with E3. It's not about showing up in Los Angeles. It's about making all these game publishers and developers come together and say, this is your two week moment. Shine as hard as you can yeah. because it's cutthroat yeah. out here. I and agree we've with lost that. that. I love that. I do, I, that. That is yeah. 100%. I always used to get super fucking excited. Oh yeah, come June. I mean, oh, yeah. I still do. I'm I, like coming also, into this week, I was so hyped, and I mean, yeah, right now I'm a little, little hurt. But E3 was always like, "Hey, it's E3, it's E3, it's insane, it's E3. Here it is, E3." And then Jeff Keighley's like, "It's Summer Games Fest, Summer Game Fest, Summer Game Fest." Hey, manage your expectations, guys. Come on. 
you yeah you set the expectations. it's like yeah. no i don't care you didn't have to say manage your expectations you just said that because you realized your show was shit and that, you wanted see, people that makes to get me mad. wonder if there was going to be more stuff and then they had to kind of cut a few things here and there and then last minute he was like fuck we gotta we gotta yeah no 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 because because the game awards has been like this for years but he always has at least two to three bangers in his pocket this is the exact same show just minus the two to three bangers and you really hate the game awards but i do not think they are zach saying mad. zach saying a lot of developers might have pulled an ian gibson and pulled out uh and not have put their stuff in there last minute Mm -hmm. I no, mean, clearly, I, but, clearly, Sony didn't use protection on Last of Us. So, <laughs> but I'm saying there's Multiple. there has never been an expectation with a game with a Jeff Keighley show to have That's more true. than two or three bangers. So, like, this is honestly this summer Game of Fest went around this two this two hours we just watched was just a single notch below the typical Game Awards. This You're it's not crazy. like this was a huge fall from him. You're this is crazy. pretty much his standard, but slightly below his own standard. <laughs> Let's get into it. Why don't we? um yeah yeah let's let's even david first me. you're let's nuts man you get out of here you're nuts you're it's nuts. called angie Ian crazy. over here i'm sorry it's just like i spent two hours watching that and it was just not worth get it, up. it we did and then, I spent, and then i spent 23 minutes watching a devolver digital and every single second was a goddamn gift to humanity it was you know who the host was Suda 51 as a, a robot. robot. Yeah. And they yeah, did a 40 yeah. second digital countdown as a joke of him just going 20, 22, 20, 21, 20, 20, 20. And it was just hilarious. And that was a goddamn beautiful thing to watch. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, folks, if you didn't know, the Summer Game Fest uh, happened today. Uh, I just realized we skipped the video game section, but we can go straight into the Gummer. Gummer. Come here. The Gummer Fest. Games Fest. <laughs> Sorry, not bunch the of, Cummer Game old, Fest. Old That's Ian's show. Uh, this is the Summer <laughs> oh. Game Fest. Um, whoo. Anyways, um, Gummy wants his num nums. Uh, Summer Game Fest was today, Thursday, January, June, June 9th. I'm having a minor stroke. 69. Uh, first game right off the docket. Street Fighter Sticks, folks, they showed it off. They showed us the punching and the hitting. And boy, does it look like uh, punching and hitting. And it's continuing look, the storyline. I'm just going to continue my asshole trend here. But there were there was literally two hours of games. Can we just hit what we think? There were a couple in here that I would love to talk about. I think if we go one by one, this is going to take forever. I mean, there weren't that many games. There's a lot. Well, if we don't spend too much time debating whether we should talk about them or not, we can That's get true. Through. Let's go. I'm just going to go through them. Finger in this list, which I think is Goat Simulator 3. Apparently, I mean, they skipped Goat Simulator 2. God, I hate you so much, You're, Ian. It's, it's a stupid This idiot. looks bonkers. I never played the first one. This one looks what bonkers. What are you doing? That You skipped so many good games. Like, where, where have you what gone? Skip? Callisto Protocol seven space, looks seven great. Seven Space Station games. Seven space station games. That's it's called space, space is great. Off. It's the space of songs. <laughs> Before, um, uh, yeah. yes, you, you are absolutely correct. Uh, the amount of space horror games that were revealed consecutively is buck wild. Oh, how yeah. long is it that all of these studios are like, oh fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like last like, year when everyone revealed a four-player co-op game, and everyone went, that's oh, true. shit. That's true. But this is like, like, there are differences between these games, but the similarities are much, much larger between them. And it really was just watching one after the other after the other. They just flowed into each other. And I, I, I mean, I guess My complaint is that they did flow good. into each other. The, they were broken up so much. I was like, just show me a fucking trailer again, um, Jeff. God damn. Callisto Protocol, I think, looks fantastic. Yes, it looks yep. almost exactly like yeah. the Dead Space remake. But it's not a game I've already played, which is great. Uh, yeah, and it's you, just you, more you gotta stuff. Imagine, you got to imagine EA is like, fuck, they're coming out exactly two <laughs> months before Dead Space Remake. That also, fucking sucks. Glenn Schofield seems like a very nice man. Who also seems like, like he's a mafia yeah. member. Oh, that too. But he spent like five minutes thanking Jeff and then thanking his entire team. And I was like, good I... for you, man. Yeah, I think I'm too. Free publicity like that. Not having to, like, deal with the publisher or anything like that. Yeah, his ulterior oh, yeah. motive. 
No, no, but like genuinely, like it seems like Jeff Keighley's bar is so low that if your game looks halfway decent, it will show up in one in either Game Awards or Summer Game Fest. Please, Jeff, stop He's fucking my wife. Jeff's I showed like, you the you game, know, Jeff. I gotta have two hours of mediocre game trailers. Where am I gonna find them? <laughs> it's just like he found them in spades, folks. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, moving on to an actual mediocre trailer. Um, hey, there's a war going on in Ukraine right now. Maybe don't show seven of minutes of brutal, uh, like modern warfare action that isn't that good looking and also you say the words water tech a couple times um like yes your games are pretty also modern warfare one four years ago did not revolutionize single player games the one no 12 years ago did that it had like it had like half a testicle because i was thinking about this when when the press were the press run up to modern warfare I'm sorry. Call of Duty <laughs> Modern Warfare. What was that? Like, was so drunk. Was that so I wish I was drunk. I'd tolerate this shit more. Like if you remember the run up to Modern Warfare, you more. <laughs> the run up to Modern Warfare, they kept showing uh, a video and they and they showed it to journalists where they're like, "We have to clear this house," and there are civilians along with like suspected terrorists. So like every room you open, there's somebody, and you can't just shoot them. You have to like wait for them to pull a gun. There are rules of engagement here. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And it turns out the actual game just didn't deliver on that. And they've completely dropped it with this. It feels like they they like, they like took half a nutsack out for modern warfare and then they quickly tucked it back. And now they're acting like they took, they took both out and waved them around and they didn't do shit. They're just back to like mediocre Call of Duty. And they're back to like, hey, what didn't we include in the first one that everyone loves? The rainy ship level that everyone loves. Yeah. Let's make the cargo unsecured. That's not a thing that a ship would do ever. So let's just do it on this ship. It's not like, like the ship's going to tip over. About is the fucking realism of whether or not they would have the cargo. That would in. never happen ever. <laughs> <laughs> no one would do that. The ship would sink. This reminded me of, uh, was it last year's Ubisoft where they did the first, like literally the first 20 minutes was Rainbow Six Siege stuff just over and over and over again. Uh, oh, That's what yeah. This felt like. It was endless. It was, it was awful. endless. Um, and it was, the only thing about this is I felt really bad that that guy saying the names of the characters clearly didn't have a teleprompter and he was just like, or it messed up because he was just like, yeah, there's characters like Price and... And they like could not remember the other characters' names. Oh, and I'm like, I I feel so bad for you right now. I mean, you put a you put um, a Call of Duty gun in my head, and I wouldn't be able to tell you a single one I, of the names. Look, I feel like I feel like honestly, part of the problem with this game is that even the developers and publisher are not excited about this game. And I say that yeah. because this game was it was revealed in a blog post like six months ago. And the information up to now has literally just been in like, hey, here's a brand new map for Warzone. Oh, by the way, we're working on Warzone 2. Like just none of it has had any pop and circumstance or fanfare up until now. And then it, it's just been like this feet in the weirdest places. But no, but like, like even just the confirmation that existed, the confirmation of the name was in such like a throwaway fashion that it feels like they don't have any excitement for this game. And when you present your game like that and announce tidbits from it like that, how am I supposed to get excited for it? Yeah. It's, it's still uh, to, to me. These exactly. next two games uh, I thought looked cool, but also looked exactly the same, which is uh, yeah, Fort this Solace was, this and I was like, Wow, it's really weird that they... That they were back to back, and I thought, yeah. as someone working during it, and I looked up, I was like, "Man, this trailer's really long." Yeah. Um, they both look cool. I'm glad Roger Clark is doing things other than Arthur on cameo, um, yeah. and that Troy Baker is doing things for his artistic so vision. By his seventh car, uh, how many yeah. cars he owns, or how wealthy he is. <laughs> so that's great for them, and they're making that thing, and then routine. Again, both these games look gorgeous and beautiful, but they were shown so close together and also didn't have that much in them that it's like, like big companies can get away with short trailers, but when you're trying to make a name for yourself, uh, it's kind of hard. At least the Fort Solace trailer had a lot of the voice acting in it. Yeah, um, that was cool. I, I will say I, Routine mm -hmm. did one thing I fucking love in sci-fi, and it's when they have fucking CRT screens still 
oh yeah that yeah. turns I, me um, on I, I feel bad for these games because just to shit on jeff keely some more like you were talking about pacing and setting up these games in an order lumping all these games together back to back to back bad call bad call yeah, for and, those games and then like addressing it too like you didn't play in it he's like man a lot yeah. of space games i'm like did you not play in this show jeff that that again <sighs> to me that feels like there was supposed to be something in between these games that disappeared yeah, maybe. I, I i don't know i have no proof on that so. um yeah it was just I, but i agree with you i forget what that's called um but it's like the alien stuff where everything is crt still it's not like yeah it's yeah. one of those stupid names they called it after everything got a name after steampunk it's like cassette core right. or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I like cassette core. That's fucking Stormgate, that's a good name. That looked okay. I, th I think that's a real thing. Um, Goat Simulator Three, Ian. We're here. Um, the best part about the Goat Simulator Three trailer may you may think it's the fact that they skipped right over two, uh, which I didn't find that funny because there's like fifteen Goat Simulator games. So eh. that's fair. Um, I, I, I'm giving this game too much credit, but it's just because this is literally the first time in the entire press conference that I had a little bit of like excitement or interest. No, no offense against Callisto and the other space station yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. It's just not a genre I enjoy, but this was like, this is when I was like, oh, they're riffing on the dead Island trailer. What's going on here? This seems like wacky weird. And for that to take that long into the show, that was, that was oh. the, the Dead Island 2 joke was very good. Yes. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I, I genuinely was like, is this Dead Island 2? Like, is it yeah. actually happening? Because I was watching it, and I was like, this is so familiar. And it wasn't until someone pointed it out that I was like, oh. And then I went back and watched the other trailer, and they're practically identical. Yeah. Um, Marvel's Midnight Suns. Uh, I'm done with Marvel forever. Um, I... And and several people when we watched it live were like, "Why the fuck don't we have gameplay in this? Like, why do they yeah. not show gameplay yeah. for this?" Uh, and, and the other thing is, like, I don't think there's anything crazy about this gameplay. This is just Marvel XCOM, so it's not like you need to hold back the gameplay. Just show it. Now, to us. Right. well, here's the thing: is it has card stuff going on in the mechanisms of the game, and that got a lot of bad reactions when they first showed it off. So there's some speculation that they're trying to retool the whole card system or get rid of it entirely. Gotcha. And that's why they didn't show gameplay, but their <laughs> game comes out in four months. Like y'all, y'all got to show some fucking <laughs> gameplay. Y'all better get on that. Um, I just like, I really wanted this to be like one of those, uh, what was it called? Freedom fighters. Like one of those games where it's like a superhero game and it's like, make your own superhero, make your own superhero team. That's what XCOM excels at is, is create is custom characters. But Based on, I don't know if they confirmed this, but the heavy rumors were that there's only one custom character and it's you and everybody else is preset Marvel Midnight Sun characters. And and for me, as somebody who's not a big XCOM fan, the thing they did best was the customization and bringing in soldiers and killing off the soldiers, etc. And just like getting rid of that almost completely. Bad move. Bad move, folks. Uh, David in the chat said they did show a separate gameplay thing with uh, the press and that they they still have the cards but it seems more retooled and it's more like a bioware game i don't know what that means yeah that's maybe less, really less tactical like, do they play view. sabak in it <laughs> i don't know maybe dialogue trees paragon renegade like the republic reference <laughs> yeah sorry oh sabak, for some reason sabak, you said right? bioware and i heard mass effect <laughs> oh i mean i, like, I don't remember what the name about star wars what's the name of the card yeah. game in uh What's the name of the gambling game in uh, Mass Effect? Gwent. <laughs> You're right. Is there one? Man, is there a gambling game? Star cards. The the gam the dice game in the first Witcher was way better than Gwent ever was, and I'm gonna say that we're getting, we're getting so here. sidetracked. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's. We can skip the Cuphead Delicious Last Course, but I will never not praise DLC. It is so good. I love it so I mean, much. I can't wait to see. It. I can't wait to play this game um, this month. It's just. The perfect title and i love it mm -hmm. um yeah. moving on honky tonky honky. star rail honky. both senseless. of these look pretty neat though these um, look neat though. i'm a little worried the first one honkai is from genshin impact so i'm a little worried it's going to be a bit you know like monetization heavy but both of these honkai and zenless zone yes, zero 100%. they look they look fantastic they look super stylish fantastic trailers uh, and then zzz which made me go to zzz um team nt Whoa. Whoa. Uh, I actually made that joke on stream. Oh, nice. 
Uh, Did you guys actually not like that trailer? That trailer was no, no. That trailer is actually ass. great. That trailer is oh, actually. Oh, I thought great. they all looked stupid. Uh, um, I, I think the second one looked way better, and it was also again weird that they put the two of them next to each other. I get it that they're, they're yeah, both yeah. Hoyoverse games, but still. TMNT uh, just come out already. Um, also, he acted like they were holding back some crazy secret about it, and it just turns out there's a six-player mode. But he's like, something they've been holding back. And I'm like, Why can't what is talk it? Isn't that the coupon? Teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are real? You guys know about the Pizza Hut coupon? What Pizza Hut no. coupon? Don't talk so to in, the original, in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game that this is like a remake or a reference to. Anyways, in the original, if you bought it, it came with a coupon for a free personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. And they brought that back for this game. If you buy the physical version of this game, you get a a coupon from Pizza Hut for a free personal pan pizza. I have okay, never been to a Pizza rules. Hut, and I never want to go to a Pizza God, Hut. Honestly, God bless you. They're they're bad. There's one right down the street next to the Marine Recruiting Center. No, and I bet okay, they eat wait, there hold, every hold day. The phone, hold the phone. Pizza chains, Domino's, top tier. Uh, what? Of of fast food pizza, Domino's is the top. No, no, no. Look, majority of fast food pizza is bad. Little Caesars is at the top Ooh, because yes. it's $5, get it, gone. Walk okay. in, you if grab I it, you're gone. Have ever had, if I ever have a Little Caesars, I will be able to get back to you, but I've never lived in a place that has had a Little Caesars. It's, it tastes the same as everything else. Maybe slightly worse, but again, $5, you walk in, you grab it, and you're gone. It is It is definitively worse, but yes, the, the price can't be beat, so whatever. Yeah. yeah. Domino's. Anyways. Uh, you don't want to enjoy your life. One Piece yeah. Odyssey, I'll never watch the show, I'll never play this game. Is kind of uh, as somebody who watched 300 episodes of the show uh, earlier this year. Uh, I had some interest. Treasure. That's like 30 percent, right? Aren't they over a thousand episodes now? Or yeah. Something? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not even fucking close. So I still I haven't. Even get to the like, Pokemon show. He still hasn't yeah. like had sex or something, right? Is that the thing? Well, because yeah, if he does, you yeah. literally kill the person. Because he can't stretch anymore, right? You, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> he, wait a minute. Loses his virginity, he loses his sorry. power. <laughs> Time out. I need to know if this is real or not, okay? Well, no, everyone I says, like, he hasn't gotten his one piece yet Oh, after a thousand episodes, so I feel like no, it's a piece uh, of ass no, he hasn't gotten yet. your question, that is not the case. He does not lose his okay, power. I, just, I, I needed to know if I was being primbist or not. You no, know, I, just, no, I gotta he know. Is, he is I mean, Ian, I guess pirate. Ian still has his superpowers uh, by that logic. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, because that's why he pulls out. <laughs> His wife pulled out. <laughs> 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 well, we gotta keep going. We're off the rails here. Holy Remember what I said? One is okay, two is great, <laughs> three with the right guest is off the rails. It's off the rails. I, I wish Jason what this was what you were talking about first. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was like, what? Hey, what are we still talking about? Okay, okay, I'm gonna bring it back on the rails. I Don't am not gonna try it, David. I'm uh, surprised anyways. at myself, but I think I, I am, am actually, <laughs> I think I'm actually excited for Saints Row because I think I'm oh. ready for. I, look How at, are you oh. a human? What the fuck? Look at it this man? way, because it's been a long time since I have played a crazy bonkers off the wall open world game where you're just running around causing car crashes, shooting stuff. Like the last time was Crackdown Three, and that barely scratched the itch. Is so I think I'm ready for the only that person that again. cares about Goat Simulator Three because it's fucking off the rails and goofy. Like, what are you I, talking about? It's like it's Ian Row. died and his clone stepped in halfway through this I'm episode. Asking, I'm not asking you to be excited about Saints Row, but what do you have against this presentation? You hitting Fortnite later, Ian? Also, Ian, no. did you know that this that this this what they showed here isn't even Saints Row? It's it's the it's I know it's the character, character creator creator that you can get for De free. Yeah, it looked like it had a lot of depth to it, though. Admittedly, it looked like you make your dongs creator. in it. Yeah. <sighs> also, it I do good. appreciate that one of the gangs that they put on the wall here is called Pantalones Fucko. That's hilarious. That's, that's what I'm talking about. The fuck pants. We don't, we don't have these these types of games anymore where they're just bonkers off the wall, like unabashed craziness. And so I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll hop into that. Because think about open world games. What do you have right now? Uh, GTA Online, which is just like, it's fun, but there's so much just like crippling load and UI and community issues with it uh, and monetization issues. There's Assassin's Creed if you want like pseudo history. What other open world stuff you got? You got Far Cry, which is just stagnant. 
That's why we got to get Breath of the Wild 2, baby. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm desperate for a different open world game, and that's why I am tentatively excited for Saints, world, Saints Row. But I need to see more of it, though. <sighs> okay. Uh, uh, I mean, they I showed off $20 game. that Ian does not play this game. Actually, I can't guarantee that. With all the takes Ian has tonight, he might he might just do I it. Know. Yeah, he'll take you. Uh, Nightingale, I think, looks cool. It could be the next sort of Valheim. Uh, I'll play it for sure. Uh, it's got some weird, like, uh, I don't know, like, weird occult, like, sciencey stuff going on here that I'm really yeah. into. Same. Uh, and this card system. So from what I gather from the card system, you are creating portals to new worlds, and you influence those worlds by placing cards down. So like if you place oh. like different oh, types of cards, cool. you get different enemies and resources and stuff. Uh, at least I, I think that. that's what they're alluding to. Oh, yeah. uh, it's like and custom then, dungeon runs. I kind of yeah, like and that. Then I think you come back and you build like your main stuff in the main world. But they showed like a card with a picture of a spider on it, and then the place he ends up has spiders. This one had ruins. So I really hope that is what like the mechanic is, because if it's not, I'm gonna go make a video game. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, I I will say this: the base building stuff does not super interest me. Although, I did play V Rising earlier this year, and the base building in that was actually pretty fucking fun. So. I, I can I ask you something about V Rising just to go on a tangent. Sure. I pick up the I want to pick up that game and play it, but somebody said something to me that has me worried. They said it's really more of a multiplayer game. Like if you play it solo, it's a bit too much of an uphill climb if it's just you by yourself. Uh, I somewhat agree with that. Yeah. You you, you, okay. you definitely you definitely want to have at least one person to play with. Yeah. I won't okay. Will let's uh let's play it. Yeah, after that. Um, you guys do it. I got, I got, I got, I mean, I, I have it. So. I, no, I feel like I should because like we're trying to be more serious about game of the year and this one's popping off this year. So I feel like I got to give it a shot. I think, um, I think it's on my short list. Oh yeah. Everything's on your short list. Um, except me. Cause I'm tall. Uh, I just want to say the ba uh, re base building. I feel like it seems more like Valheim where like the base building, exactly. you were more exactly. building it to like have cool stuff and have an area, but you could get away with like, having a shack to put your stuff mm. in um where like the base building in in valheim was like uh like i want to do this because it's fun not because i mm. have to make a base you know um yeah. layers of fears does anyone care about that or is it okay for no I, I have i have a question i don't know if you guys have the answer but uh i saw jess from giant bomb was talking about this on twitter and i i couldn't find a clear answer which is this is kind of presented as a new game but based on people who are familiar with the series they're saying like i've seen a lot of familiar stuff in this so they couldn't the, people who are familiar with the series couldn't tell if it was like a remake remastered like a bundle with additional stuff on top and that's yeah. uh that's kind of a if that's true that's kind of a very weird presentation of what you're trying to present as a new game but it's not and so i i just kind of wanted to call that out I, there's I, some clarity around here needs to be revealed I was curious because I also wanted to know because if it's a remix of the first two games in like some sort of random order and all that sort of stuff, the title makes more sense. If this is a yes. third separate game, you done fucked up with your title because adding yeah, an S was the second one is the most confusing thing to anyone yeah. who searches for anything ever because yeah, people will buy layers of I fear that, I was like, oh, instead of layers of fears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up real quick. It's it's layers of fear, okay. Layers and of fear. And then and then layers of fear two, and then it's layers of fears. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's bad. That's yeah. bad. Yeah. God forbid. If if um, anybody ever wants to look up a guide for the first game ever again, they're gonna be fucked. Yeah. Uh, that and Call of Duty Modern Warfare two. Yeah. I didn't actually see this trailer for Gotham Knights. Um, I don't really care about it. You didn't miss much. It was cool. Uh, and then the showstopper, the end here, the very end, the best thing they had uh, kind of leaked this morning. Um, listen, we all know Ian's opinions on companies re-releasing games that already came out. Um, I well, like this, Last of Us. Let this me qualify. There's two ways to do it that are proper, right? Right. Which is just which is either wait long enough and do like a meaningful remake or significant remaster. Like I'm taking this 480p game and bumping it up to 4k, et cetera, mm -hmm. or 
you have it as like a very cheap generational upgrade, kind of like what Xbox has been doing where they're just like, oh, you want to play this 360 game? Hey, go ahead. Backwards compatibility. We're bumping it up to 4K, 60 FPS. It's not, it's not more money. This is them spending a shitload of money and dev time on a game that honestly doesn't that look that much better than the PS4 remaster? Like at the end, they did side by sides. And I, like up to that point, I felt a little bit bad because Druckmann was like, we did all this work to it. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, actually this sounds like they did a lot of work to this. And then they did the PS4 remaster next to the new version. And there were scenes where it was just like, there's no graphical difference here. It just looks like an aesthetic difference, like an art choice difference. Like this does not need to be coming out. This, they did not need to put this much effort into it because there's the PS3 version, there's the PS4 remaster that runs on PS5. And the fact that they're charging $70 for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, would I, say, I agree. I think that's a wildly steep price at this point. But yeah, uh, the price is not making me happy. I think uh, I need to see more, but I think the gameplay stuff will help a lot. If that I mean it's supposed to be all of two's gameplay, yeah. which is way better than one's gameplay. Not that one is bad, but two is just better gameplay. Um so it'll be interesting to see that with the crafting system, and everything. Um and like listen, I understand the argument of these devs could be working on something else instead of doing this. But also, there's a world where none of these devs were hired and they all weren't working anyways. Like, if this game wasn't getting made, they could have not had jobs. So, yeah. there's a two sides to that. Is... I'm not saying you're wrong. Like, a lot of them probably yeah. could go over to other things. But there's also that side of it where... And, and and as much as it pains me to say it, I would much rather have this game than Days Gone 2. Because that series just needs to die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so. from what they were talking about, the, the, the Last of Us... Um, multiplayer game actually sounded kind of cool uh if it's like yeah, a, a cool. large city or something that you're doing stuff through i've always wanted the yeah. cor- kind of like um what was it called like the zone in the division the end zone yeah but, but more more persistent yeah and like know. bigger and so it's more of like combining the division with uh escape from tarkov and kind of making that sort of yeah. big thing that sounds pretty interesting so- and then Druckmann's working on some third game that nobody knows about Uncharted Correct. 5. <clears throat> no, it's not. That'd be know. hilarious. Uh, a space game. Space horror game. What, yeah. What, what fucking killed me was just like, <laughs> hey, yeah, it did suck that they had their big announcement leaked. Absolutely. But even still, there was about like seven minutes where he was talking on stage. And then, yeah, they brought out Laura Bailey and Troy Baker. And they're like, oh, they're in the show let's show you something from the show it's just a fucking picture oh okay yeah. that's, okay yeah. sure 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 uh oh hey you remember you you heard about the rumored uh multiplayer game it, yeah it's going to be a so it's an own standalone game it's going to be bigger than we originally intended what do we have to show for it it's a fucking concept art picture Woo! yeah and like let's talk about it for seven minutes and then it's like okay here yeah we know that you know here's the trailer this yeah. was this this was Jeff Keighley's big get, and he wanted to milk it, and he milked it a bit too much, folks. No, but yeah, yeah but he, when you again the the whole my, my whole gripe with this thing wasn't the ads, wasn't honestly even some of the uh, uh, the majority of these announcements are pretty good. Ian, you're fucking crazy, but <laughs> like them ending with this. And the way that they played it out for fucking 10 minutes. And it's just like, yeah, we know it's here. And then like they sat there, like Jeff Keighley stood on the stage and just like talked at the camera for another 40 seconds. And I'm like, no, when the last trailer ends, you cut straight to the credits. <laughs> like that yeah, the, the, montage. Yeah. Yeah. the thing should have blown down the house and been like, wah. And instead it was like, Okay, everybody, uh, remember, we're going to be back next week with another thing that you're not going to watch or care about. Yeah. Uh, also, Xbox is doing their thing on Sunday. This is Jeff Keighley. I'm Ow. hosting Netflix tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, not to backtrack a little bit, but now when the stupid fucking show comes out, now I'm just waiting for these two bozos to show up and ruin it, probably. Yeah, uh, they're going to edge here in it, and I'm going to be pissed off. Because he was like, oh, it's not just, oh. we didn't want to just give them a cameo. And I was like, no, give them a cameo and don't talk about that's it. That's what you should do. Yeah. <laughs> like, just do that. I thought, They're voice I thought actors for a, a reason. Hideous clicker for a fun joke. And then. I thought, sorry, you, you said you had to wait for these two bozos to ruin it. And I thought you meant myself and Zach. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> what? 
It yeah, was already you will ruined. ruin it. <laughs> um, and also, uh, I probably my favorite part of the show was a completely sweaty and unhinged The Rock promoting his <laughs> his, oh, yeah. his yes. caffeine drink. But first of all, the fake live cutaway to clearly a pre-recorded video. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was, was like they paid badly. for a cameo. Yeah. It's just in the middle of him. And I thought it was a video game or something. It wasn't. It was just no, Black was Adam, which we already dream. had. Yeah. It, it, yeah. The it, same the trailer. We're like cutting to him being in his gym shirtless, like like in the pose from the fucking meme. I was like, that's hilarious. Amazing. Love it. And he's like, oh, yeah, Fortnite. And I was like, oh, that's what this is going to be about. It's about the rock and the foundation in Fortnite. Cool, cool, cool. No. It was about shilling his fucking yeah. drink and talking about Black Adam. And then he was like, he's like Superman, but he's not weak to magic. And I was yeah. like, is that what Superman is known for? Dwayne? <laughs> yeah, Harry I Potter could like, kill Superman any day. Yeah. <laughs> I feel A like Jeff Keighley. It works. I feel like Jeff Keighley's like, how many bangers slash celebrities can I get on a show and that makes it better? And then he's like, remember when uh, Keanu Reeves came out for Microsoft? Wasn't that awesome? But he's forgetting the part where it's like, it has to be something that we as gamers watching the show actually care about and are excited for. It can't just be random celebrity cameo. That's no. not good enough. Like when the Muppets kept showing up and it was like... No, God, wasted fuck space. Thank you man. for talking shit about the Muppets. God damn it. Fuck you with the Muppets. I don't need them in a two in a three hour game award show. God, it's already God. padded too much. Were you Next you're gonna say something bad about too. bare naked ladies. I love the Muppets. I don't need them in a three hour show though. Man, yeah. I I think look, I look, I just want to say. Jeff Keeley is putting a lot on the line. He's stepping up when a lot of the industry is stepping back, but he's been doing that for so long. He needs to get better. Like we have been screaming these complaints at him for years. I agree with that. And he needs to get better. Period. I screamed it at him. He heard me. <laughs> please, please, buddy, please. Folks, uh, that was the summer game fest uh, of 20. Sorry, Zach, you were going to say something. Go ahead. I can't remember anymore. Okay. Folks, that was the Summer Game Fest 2022, hosted by the lovely Jeff Keighley. Uh, it's over. Uh, we can all go home now. I just... Um, I, you, did you, did any did either of you guys watch the Devolver Digital? I wa No, not I the Devolver Digital. I, I saw Day of the Devs yet. a little bit. I'll just say Choo -choo that Charles there are... Still looking good. There are five games in it, and pretty much every single one of them is at least interesting, and there are several of them, one in particular, that looks incredible. This so is the you, toy one that we are like move, moving no, across different. I'm sorry. There are two that look incredible. That one looks incredible. Angerfoot, yeah. the one where you have green legs and you're just kicking down doors and shooting crocodile guys. Incredible. Like, like even if you don't care about the story around the show they've been doing for years, just the games they showed in that were so much better. And you totally, if you care at all about games and if you spent the time watching Summer Game Fest, you really need to watch Devolver. That's a much better show. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, I, I didn't watch it, so I'm going to watch it after the podcast, but, um, I am, s I feel so, what is wrong with people who get their hands on the alien franchise and think, Hey, you know what fucking person we've never heard from Marines. We've never, we've never addressed them in anything ever in alien. Yeah. We should just do more Marine stuff. Like fucking stop. I was it's, so it's happy for it to be like fruit. I was it's so happy for it to be like Alien Isolation 2 or like some cool alien game or something. But no, it's a now top down shooting McPooty. And I'm wait, upset. it was set. It was. I feel like I missed the actual gameplay segment. It's top down. Yeah, yeah dude. They showed at the very end. Yeah, for like dude. two seconds. It's like a, so it's like a top, twin stick. Top down. That's yeah, it's, more, it's a little more isometric, but mm. it's still pretty top. I like um, look my favorite part of the colonial marines is not when it's like five of them against one alien and the aliens picking them off like sure that's cool but I don't really want to play that because we play that over and over and over again in all sorts of different games I want the version of the colonial marines where they're like literally colonial marines and they're just like fascist like scum going around yeah like literally just like space <laughs> colonials going around and blowing apart civilians like do it over the top tongue-in-cheek starship trooper style baby give me that game that's that so sounds much better. awesome ian wait but a 1700s game of yeah, colonial say, british marines with aliens yeah. would be awesome has oh, that ever oh, been no, done 
there, there I don't are, know, but that's there are really 1700s good. 1700s first person shooters. There's a couple. They're really like, yeah. No, no, but like, no, but but like aliens, sci-fi. That's a good joke too. Fucking George Washington's crossing the fucking Delaware and all of a sudden aliens he, come like, down. He, no, he's oh, pointing. Like, oh, yeah. George Washington is pointing across the Delaware River in the boat where he's standing up and he like coughs for a second and a chest burster just comes out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that'd that's be like great. I read this book one time. It was part of this whole series, and it was this guy who does alternative uh, uh, historical fiction. And so the whole premise Fan was fiction. that, like, in 1944, right after D Day, aliens invade. So all of a sudden, all these powers have to like come to a like consensus and start fighting they these invading on aliens. A, they have to put the Nazis on hold and <laughs> yeah. start fighting the aliens. Yeah. Oh and Jesus. It was, and it was like. That's okay, that's good. that's some that's a cool premise. That's a cool premise. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, like make make a game about like it doesn't have you know it's gonna be like LV four two six, but like do something about it as the colony's getting overrun, uh, or something mm -hmm. like that. Like the start of it, I, I don't know. It's just you got to do yeah. stupid shit like this. You just like four v one or four v horde has been done so many times with the alien franchise by now that just it stop. Does. I would have taken an Alien Colonial Marines 2 over uh, this. I thought that's what it was. And I was like, sure. Because honestly, like, okay. we played the first one. It wasn't that terrible. No, we fixed we the AI. The... Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> I would play that again. But uh, anyways, we can finally, game. folks, that is the Summer Game Fest 2022. Um, now we can go back and talk about the games we've been playing this week. Uh just quickly, I never did the news theme, which is great because we don't have one currently. You know, I, I, screw wait, you. I, you're, I was you're the one. Genuinely, I was about to genuinely lose my shit if you didn't play the news theme and have it be the updated one. So you yeah. telling me that I'm gonna have to lose my shit on this? When show. when have I gotten the new? When did you send me the new one? I fucking hate you so much. Will. What do you mean? Did you, did you send it? You, did you send it to you the wrong played person? It, you played it on the show and it didn't come well, out I, right. You are joking me right now. I'm not joking you. I put it in the in your Discord. Where? <laughs> okay, where did you do this? Let me find it. Let me this find it. This is one it. of those moments. This is one of those moments where I can't tell if Will's joking or not. I'm genuinely. I do not have it. You will. I literally posted moron. it. Where? I'm in my Discord. To it. I am, an I am right now. I am right now. Reply. I listen to it. At will. I don't see it. Boom. In stream Go clips? To the fucking message. I don't see it. You are joking. Oh my gosh, that's so far away. You know who I blame? I posted it and I added I saw you. I saw it. You know, I, I was I confused when I posted that because I wa I'm looking now at these Halucha clips, and I was really confused because I said, "Oh, Halucha didn't tag me, but I got a thing." That's very interesting. Even David's in the chat saying yeah. it's in your Discord. Oh, I just I don't see it, which is crazy. Just click it and hit play, and yeah, it'll go it. through the I speaker. Really don't people see will it. hear it. Wild. Uh, anyways, folks, I mean, the news is already done, so we don't need to play it. Um, <laughs> I have the just... guitar right here. I will play it live again if I have to. Um, anyways, folks. Uh... Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? It's over the news. That was the. You played the short version? <laughs> I told you, I don't have the long version. You can. Jeez, it's my right God. there. I don't oh see God. it. You're joking. You're. I hate you so much. I, genuinely, has somebody ever walked off the show? <laughs> I feel like I'm going crazy here. I'm with you, Zach. That's crazy. Um, That's wild. I am forever gassed. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just as crazed. Oh. I am never coming on this show again. <laughs> if I had it, I would play it. Is all I'm gonna I say. Hate you so much. If I had it, uh, oh. folks, we covered a lot of the news already. 
which I don't even know why I was playing it because I was just got finished saying that it's not the time for the news because we're talking about the games we've been playing. Well, let's <laughs> let's finish out the news quick and then we're going to take as long as we want to play the games because you're the <laughs> asshole who wanted to talk about every game in the summer. Games. We didn't talk about it. I skipped a bunch of them. Thank you. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> this is... Post it for me and I'll play it. I hate you so much. <laughs> I just literally added you twice in fucking Discord. Show it to me. Where is it? Do you want me to screen share my fuck... Okay. Share my screen. Share your uh, screen and show me, Zach. Where... Uh, which one am I sharing? Sharing this right here. Yep. Sharing the screen. Going to your Discord. Going, going to, to stream Discord. clips sponsored by Hall Lucha. You okay. fucker, you deleted it. I, I didn't know, do anything. There. It's I, weird. I don't I, see it either. I did see it earlier. Oh, I hate you. No, I, I literally added the old Show one. Show it to me. You added the old one? Here it is. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, myself yeah. twice. Here, I, add it again. You deleted it. it. I didn't do anything. Is it too big? No, you posted it earlier. The XML file does not have it. You did delete it. I didn't do anything. I I didn't touch it either. This is what I've been saying. I never I, got I, it. I'm, I'm, here, I can screenshot this. You you see it on on the right here, with the updated here's the news mp3 posted two three days ago. I believe you. I don't see it. I'm just trying to be <laughs> real with you. This yeah, is no I, longer I, I a bit see removed. Uh, let me see if I can find it on my computer and I'll resend it to you. But this is <laughs> something's going on. I just want to be perfectly clear with you. It's Discord wonkiness. <laughs> um, the rest of the news that we can finally get to. Uh, just a shout out here. I didn't even put this on here. The amazing uh, deep dive uh, that one... GameSpot writer Mark Delaney did into Blue Box's dev uh, behind Abandoned and how they misled, misled fans and solicited business deals in a toxic chat room. Um, I had been getting bits of pieces, bits and pieces of this through like daily meetings and stuff like that. And I think it really came together pretty well. Uh, I have not f actually finished reading the entire thing. But it's kind of wild, that whole abandoned thing, and that guy riding the wave of people thinking it was a Kojima game. Um, and maybe making people think it was a Kojima game. Uh, it's just just kind of crazy. Um, yeah, the, I, I, I kind of knew this was coming because I believe a couple months ago, I think a little bit after the fan fever had died around abandoned, people had basically tweeted being like hey if you look at this guy's like four past projects all of them have been canceled never released etc and it was like oh this is just a developer that has not just done nothing but up to this point has not delivered on any of his promises or projects and i was like yep that sounds about right that's probably what's happening with this how did they get into a sony show they didn't get into a Sony show. Was it a Sony show or was it just Sony saying, hey, this game is going to have no, it was aired a, a PS5 during a, demo. a direct or something. A state of play. What, oh, that 10 seconds. Is that what you're talking no, about? No, that whole trailer played during. I remember watching the trailer. It was PlayStation block. I thought it, it was during article. a show. Mm. Back when that blue box thing first happened. Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. Uh, anyways, it's a really yes. interesting uh, piece, so definitely go read it. Um, this next thing I did not click on beforehand, but I am genuinely upset. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? <laughs> don't, don't fucking now patronize me now. Song so you can sing along and it won't bore you. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean But we don't want to have a vocal spat So let's bring it back to your local chat There you go folks, because I don't trust Will to play it Can I unmute him now? <laughs> Did you mute me? Okay, you're Wait, unmuted Wait, what, what was that Ian? Am I are muted you, right are now? Are you saying something? 
I may have messed up my audio settings. No, I'm fucking with you. you can hear <laughs> okay. There's like there's like this switch and it says A and B and like I know both of them have to be pressed to play audio, but then I can never remember which one has to be unpressed and it's uh... like Ugh. Anyways, there you go folks. We'll we'll incorporate it. I will hammer Will until he incorporates it into the local chat next week. That's my promise. I hate you so much, Will. Uh <laughs> Sorry, what were we? What was the next news topic? Uh, there's a Battlestar Galactica uh, NFT game coming. Okay, I couldn't I hate, care less. Yeah, I hate this future we live in. Uh, E3 is coming back next year. I'm Woo! okay with this. Everybody said it was dead, but but we talked about this in the press release. They they never said it was dead. That was just people saying that. They just said we're not having anything this year. I I, so I think my, my thinking was that they were dead in the terms that. Jeff Keeley would eat their lunch and none of the other people would want to go back to them. <laughs> uh, clearly today that did not happen. And yeah. uh, I think E3 has a better chance uh, than before. That being said, last year's E3 wasn't great. So. Yeah, it still felt. Yeah, definitely. That was the digital only one that was really disorganized. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, like, fuck it. Just buck wild. Like, cause everybody got a conference and not yeah. everybody needs a conference. And yeah, a I lot of them conference. were bad. Yeah. The Co Coach Media had a fucking conference, and it was That's one of the right, most abysmal did. things I've ever Coke seen. Media. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Diet Coke uh, Media. Diet Coke Media. Anyways, this next story, um, we don't have to talk about it too much in depth because I know we're running short on time, and we have to leave plenty of time for game discussion. But uh, there is a very revealing expose about the unannounced one to switch sequel and it's it's interesting but basically there is a basically finished one to switch sequel that nintendo has but it keeps play testing so poorly that they don't want to release it and there are warring factions one that says let's just ship it out the door and make what money we can and the other one says no we do have some semblance of quality we have to maintain <laughs> here at nintendo, nintendo seal of quality <laughs> And it it's kind of a it's a sad story, but at the same time, I feel like it's a good story that there are people actually putting their foot down and saying, no, we can't just release any dumbass game we make. This story is awesome and cool in so many ways The the answer is that they should just put this out on the Switch Plus as a free game. That way people won't yeah. have any expectations if they True. try to release this and charge any money, unless like maybe $20, uh, they're no. going to get clowned because yeah. Yeah, every uh, the concept is like they they were gonna make the the games longer. I don't know if either y'all played One Two Switch. Uh, I did. Yes, I, I, it. I rented it from GameFly, oh, and I so still smart. felt like I still felt like it was a waste of my time and effort. Yeah, I, I did. I did pay the money, and I was pretty upset. Uh, yeah. And again, it's it's the thing where like it's fun for twenty minutes, and then you play through all the games, and then maybe you play yeah. the three that are good twice, and then. You're like, wow. Yeah. It's also it's nothing. There's nothing like a video game that that tells you to not look at it. Like you yes. were most of those games, you're not supposed to look at the screen. So it's like, yeah. what it's, am I it's, doing? It's the frustrating it has, thing uh, where, mm -hmm. like, hey, fucking WarioWare smooth moves, pretty good. Fuck you, David. Uh, in the chat, sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no, David. Well, if you're the person named David is listening to this, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> if your name is David, <laughs> fuck off. Uh, no, but but y'all y'all talked about this with Jason the other week. Uh, lots of people in Save Data are fucking idiots. They think Warrior is a bad franchise. They are wrong. No, it's great. And, yeah, they're very but wrong. I think I think just just to to jump on that, WarioWare has so many mini games in it that that like you just have Micro to get games. to fifty percent good because there's so many good ones in there. And One Two yeah. Switch was so few games, and if I remember correctly, it was multiplayer only. Yeah. So it was so limiting in itself in two different ways that it just had no legs on it. It should have been a pack in, period. And it would have been an okay pack in. Yep. 100%. A billion percent. I mean, the reason I bought it was because it was the only game at launch yeah, that showcased same. the like advanced rumble yes. that uh, yeah. HD they had rumble, the please. HD rumble, yes. The marbles, yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to try that. And that game was pretty cool. I was like, wow, it feels like there's so many different marbles. But. Uh, and the meat I can't think of another one. game that, that used fun. that feature. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, this is Buck Wild. The only way they, if, if they want to try and 
get any sense of value out of the probably millions of i don't know about millions but it just hit me that no other game they put to this game no other game has used that dice mechanic because the one two not one two switch the 151 classic games the dice yeah. rolling and particularly yacht dice which i play a lot with karen uh not yahtzee um wait what yacht it's dice yahtzee motherfucker that scared the shit out of me sorry it's, something it's, my their, it's their knockoff of Yahtzee. yeah it's their okay. knockoff of yeah so they can't call it i Yahtzee. thought you were being serious and i was first off i was like what the fuck also i was like just imagining you and your girlfriend fucking playing a dice game like you're goddamn boomers what we but play because Yahtzee. you're younger you use it on switch yahtzee is a great game i agree i know it's incredible you're line I'm very confused now. You're very hostile. And you're out of line. And Will, you're out of line. <laughs> no, you're coming at me because you because I deleted your thing and me tricked you. But you're just okay, coming yeah. at me. You did. Uh, it comes out, folks. It all fucking comes out. And it I'm always so comes glad out. That how Lucha is gonna fucking clip this. What are you talking Justice about? Justice for Zach, folks. We're not even live anymore, Zach. I hate your ass. <laughs> Folks, um, no, but the, that has a dice rolling mechanic in Yacht Dice that my girlfriend and I play on 151 games on the Switch, and, and uh, you hit A to roll them. Oh, you don't fuck even. That. You don't even. That I'm fine with that. I, I would prefer both, honestly, because then you could be fancy if you want to, but if you don't want to, you so can just you can do it. this, and it rolls the dice a little bit, but you have to hit A to pour the cup. Oh, you can't do like. Okay. Anyways, um, the final one we're not going to talk about, but uh, Hideo Kojima's new game basically leaked, and it was kind of semi-confirmed because there were uh, Kojima Productions reached out and said, "Please remove this article." Um, so you're going to have to tune into the next episode yeah. of Chasing Kojima. Yeah, it's fully that. recorded. We talked about the whole thing there, so go check it out. Uh, you it should be on the podcast. You didn't delete it, Will. I mean, oh. if you were involved, it might have been. Look, let's talk about games, and I want to say something very clear here. It was your decision to run long during news, so we're not going to rush games. We're just going to do it normal. Zach, tell me about the game you've been playing. Folks, thank you so no, much no, no, for no. tuning We're talking about games. I don't no, give a shit about I don't want to talk about games anymore. I'm Come done on. with the show. We can talk about games. That's fine. Zach, let's talk you've about been games. playing Eastward. Tell us about Eastward. Yeah, Eastward... Uh... It's a pretty good game. News, I don't know if news, it's up it's either of your alleys. News, what, what is this game? I hear your ass playing this fucking news, song right now. But now there's more uh, seriously, though, what is this game? I don't know anything about it. Uh, it is a indie... <laughs> such a fucking <laughs> asshole. Uh, it is a indie uh, pixel art game, I believe made by two people, uh, which is insane because the amount of like gorgeous art in this game uh, already is like another level and like the the thing that has shocked me continuously as i've kept playing i'm probably like 15 hours in now so i've, I've played a decent amount of this game uh every time they introduce like new characters and at this point there's over 50 different npcs that i've seen all of them have like insane amounts of details in their animation and so mm -hmm. many of them will like if they say something funny or like they react in a way like their character model will go like whoa and like i I'm so impressed with the amount of work they've done into the pixel art of this game. That being said, this game has lots of other great things to it. Uh, it is, uh, I, I talked about this on Save Data Cast last week, uh, twitch.tv slash Save Data Team. I don't listen to that. Yeah, I know you don't. Um, but <laughs> they, I'm going to have to give a, a brief spoiler, so, story spoilers for like the first two hours of the game. Uh, That's fine. We don't care. But, but it's like a yeah, it's like you're not gonna play, play this game anyways. Uh, no, sorry, but, sorry, I don't, I don't mean that. I just mean we care a little care bit about spoilers. spoilers on this podcast. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's the first two hours. Go yeah, ahead, yeah. Man. go ahead. Uh, yeah. you, 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 you're playing as this guy named John. He's uh, lives in an underground town of like maybe twenty people. He's a miner, uh, and he finds this one day. Find before the game like even six? starts, finds this girl with white hair. <laughs> what? Eight. <laughs> How old is he? I don't even want to be here anymore. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry. He's a minor. He said he's a minor. You gotta I be more specific. I hate you so, so goddamn much, dude. I can't. I took the glasses off. Oh. Will and I knew immediately. <laughs> that was a genuinely funny joke, and you would have laughed if nothing else had happened laugh. during this episode. I would have uh, laughed. Oh, wait, let me before uh, you continue. Let me say, I genuinely, genuinely did not see that in the 
the stream I'm aware clips you didn't see chat. it. Okay, I'm making sure you... I did delete the messages, because that's yeah, funny. Yeah, I'm also aware you did that. <laughs> but I just want you to know, that was completely news to me when you said you had sent me the theme. I had no well, idea. Well, here's the news. <laughs> We're talking about news. <laughs> I just want to say, this is from a place of love. We genuinely like you. Ian might not, but well, I genuinely I'm like you. Next week's Save Data stream. No. I'm just saying it right now. I haven't no. seen I'm the rules in that hours, hours, man. But I'm going to change them. <laughs> They're gone. They're past Anyways, the tell us about these miners you're hanging out with. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't have the heart. It's not in me anymore. I just want this show to end. Oh. Um, but oh, no. uh, this miner guy meets this girl <laughs> who's a, in a capsule... He saves her, kind of adopts her. I'm Shut done. up, I'm, Ian. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm done. You're so talking about minors and not in you anymore. Come on, Zach. Why are you doing this to us? No, he's going to leave and get his dog. <laughs> oh, my Anyways, gosh. Tell me about Dragon Quest Eleven S. I see you're finally playing it. Oh boy, Ian! I am a hundred and ten hours into Dragon Quest Eleven S, but it feels like what? I've only played it for seven. Uh, that is because the quick Are resume feature stuck? of that game does not respect. <laughs> I thought you had a problem. <laughs> no, Oof. does not respect the fact that that game is quick resumed and it is simply accruing time. So my goal now is to just see how much time I can push into that sucker. Um. <laughs> I've played maybe 10 hours or eight hours now. It's really fun. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I just got, so you can play the whole game in 3d or you can play the whole game in 2d. And I just got to the point where uh, there's like a special thing in the special edition where you go into this mm -hmm. tick tick tock town or something, which is all 2d. And then uh, you get sent back in time to each of the previous um, dragon quest games to fix something that went wrong so the hero in that game can still save the world. Oh, gotcha. So and you, and you have to beat that game, and then you go on to the next yeah. one, you beat that one. So that's why so, it's 100 hours. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, totally. No, but you get, like, these passwords from these creatures that you see around, and so that's, like, the side thing that you can do while you're playing the game. So you, you get the passwords, you go back, the past words, uh, Ooh, which is pretty good. good. It's a pretty good joke, right? That is good. That's yeah. pretty good. So you get those, and then you go uh, and and do the thing. So I did one for the first Dragon Quest game. Uh, I want to get to the eighth because that's the one I played already. Um, yeah. So that's really cool. But um, Zach, just to catch you up, uh, I am eight hours into this game, Dragon Quest Eleven. I don't care, Will. But uh, <laughs> Xbox thinks I'm 110 hours into it because Quick Resume uh, does not uh. pause the game. Uh, so I just think no, it sounds like it's so, a zero out of ten game, though. Not literally, on no, it's kind of good actually. That's so weird, though. Like I don't mean to get into technical details, but like it's not suspending the game; it's like doing a save state of it. So it's such a weird bug. Like I thought the tech wouldn't even allow that type of bug yeah. to exist because it's not. It's not like closing your your 3ds and it puts it in a suspend sleep mode. Like it's literally yeah. a save. It's state. just it's just cooking. And I wonder if I'm just my character's just staring at the priest after saving, and he's just like, yes. "Dude, what do you do?" So, um, but it's really fun. I've really enjoyed the story so far. They kind of tipped the tropes on their heads, and this is only my second Dragon Quest game, so maybe they didn't actually do that. If for other people who are more familiar with the series, but to me, it feels that way, and um, it's been really fun. It also looks really good <laughs> compared to the other Dragon Quest games I've played, um, and the fact that you can play the entire game in 2D is is just crazy um it's just and it's gorgeous at the same time uh it's just kind of cool so i've been enjoying that uh and then other than that i've been playing uh hell at loose uh i played a little bit before this stream tonight in which several people screamed at me that i'm gonna get fucking shot because of my white helmet uh and i was like okay yeah. and then that guy got shot and i didn't revive him uh <laughs> so then i just kept moving on but it's fun to like play that game casually because the amount of, like, people you come across and, like, guys who are just, like... Like, our squad leader doesn't know any of us. And he's just, like, taking up the reins and being like, Okay, we gotta head over here. Oh, there's this over there. Hey, Hunt, can you come over here and help me out? Blah, 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 blah. Like, it's, it's wild how quickly, like, these people are so comfortable. And how, like, yeah. the player base forces everyone to have mics and talk. 
uh and if you're in a position of command you have to have a mic to talk so it's kind of wild uh like the stuff you walk into on that and uh and even like this one guy on my team is just like hey can you ask the commander for a new supply truck i want to bring it here and here he's like yeah the commander will get to you in a second he'll blah 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 and it's just like it's funny yeah how like nice everyone is to each other and when they're mean it's because they're either frustrated because you not you're doing like they're frustrated someone for not doing a good job or being a dick or they're just like hugely racist and you try to get away from them uh but yeah. other than that it's it's a genuinely good game uh it's fun uh it's optimized like dog shit uh but uh it's fun world war ii get to shoot uh the bad guys i will say uh and sometimes you shoot the good guys because it's just the way the cookie crumbles folks uh and also hot news this week folks oh Hot news, gotta play the news theme. Along and it won't bore you though. Sorry, Perfect gotta play. Oreo. I hate your ass. Uh, here's an area. <laughs> oh, you gotta play the, uh, the bonus verse for a second there. Uh, back to your local chat. Just talk about the other games and the <laughs> uh anyways, it says here under the news, Will is a bad man. I uh, just want to get that hot new news out yeah, here. I, I did add that. Uh, from anonymous news. ant eater. Uh, Will I did here. notice you didn't talk about Hard Space Shipbreaker, but I know you've been playing it. Yeah, I played a little bit more of it, and I encountered all of the things you said about it in quick succession. Uh, probably because you pointed all of them out, and I said I don't want to deal with this anymore. And then I have not played it since. Yeah. That's fair. It's one of those games that has its 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 problems, but I couldn't stop yeah. playing it. And it, it's really about can you get past these to get at the good yeah. game? Yeah, like you you were and pointing out how game. you you were the one discovering if the new ships would be any different, if things would change, and then you reported that things don't change. So I just said, I don't want to keep yeah. doing this. Uh, although yeah. I was genuinely having fun with the first couple of those things. So um, yeah, it, I was it doing it a lot time. where. I don't I don't really start work until like eight eight thirty, eight forty five. And I was waking up at like six, six thirty, and instead of just laying in bed on Twitter for an hour and a half, I'd be like, Okay, and I'd get out of bed and I'd just play like a shift or two, a hard space shift breaker. Like it was a great um great way to do that. But I think I'm done with it, which is really a shame because I just hit a really good story beat. Um, we talked previously about how this game is like all about like unionization and like the individual versus the corporate and like future dystopian capitalism, etc. <clears throat> and um, the story beat hit kind of a predictable part like you knew it was coming. But when it finally this conflict kind of boiled over, it was just shocking and fascinating to watch it happen in like the little like five, six minute cutscene, like the story developments. Again, all of it a mile away. None of this was surprising, but just the way that it played out with these characters and everything was fantastic. But that was the end of act two. And I think I have like 30 or 40 <laughs> hours in this game. And I think oh. I think part of it's broken because I don't I don't think the cutscenes trigger off of when you end when you complete a ship. I think they trigger off the end of your shift and the shifts are normally 10 to 15 minutes each. And a ship takes, let's say 45 minutes. So you would have three shifts for each ship, but I disabled the shift timer because it was annoying. It was literally just making you stop, go do something and then come back like two minutes later to continue doing your job. So I think again, this is a, this is a presumption of mine. I think because of that, I am experiencing the story like two to three times slower than I should be. And that combined with me basically having seen every type of ship and doing them and, and having 34 hours in this game, I was like, I don't want to play this game anymore. Plus also, uh, you know, like, like a minor spoiler here, but basically as the story goes on and people get frustrated, one of your coworkers is like, Hey, uh, I want to talk about like, it's called like industrial protest and they never really explain it out, but they're kind of just like, we hit them in their pocketbook. And I was like, oh, I get what you're putting down. Instead of us trying to like salvage a ship, we just destroy the ship. And I was like waiting for that to be like a mechanic where all of a sudden the game switches and it's just like, fuck the corporation, destroy the ship. That's your new goal. But it never did. Like the, But the story beat happened where I was like, fuck this company. 
I don't want to tear the ship up anymore because like literally I'm so invested in the story. I don't want to give the company any money. So I started destroying ships, but it never happened. So it was like there was this great shift in momentum in the story Mm -hmm. and they kind of almost told you what you need to do, but the mechanics and the gameplay never actually switched. So it's like huge shift in momentum and tone and story, but then you're supposed to just go back and continue playing the game as normal. And it's like, no, that didn't work. So still a really fun game. Definitely worth giving it a shot. If you enjoy it as much as I do, it's it's really fun. I really wish I could see the story to the end, but I feel like I basically have like 15 to 20 hours of more ship breaking of the same ship types. So unfortunately, I think I'm done with Heart Space Shipbreaker. It's still on the game of the year list, though. Could easily make our top 10. This year feels a little bit slow. How so much far. of it do I have to play to be on that list? I think I said five ships, which is oh, okay. it's probably about, about 10. It's probably about two and a half, three hours. Yeah, yeah it's really about much. I said ships, not shifts. Yeah, ships. Okay, yeah, then you're good. Yeah, that, that's enough because there's not much beyond that. It doesn't get well. Good. Five ships would be five shifts anyway. Not if you disable shifts. Plus, shifts are only 10, 15 minutes. A ship could take like oh, 30, oh, 45 oh, minutes. Oh, sorry. I don't have the timer on. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, the other game I played. I was, I've been looking for a game to play lately, and it's weird because I know PlayStation Plus Premium, et cetera, is hitting the US next week. And so there's games on that catalog I want to play. So I'm like, I want a game to play now, but I can't really play it for more than four or five days. So I tried out on a whim Umarangi Generation. You guys know about this game on the Xbox? No, I've never played it. This is, uh, it's like, it's like a very artsy, like, uh, I don't want to say anime, but it's definitely like a Western eastern style uh dystopian future and you're uh uh taking pictures basically so like you're literally going around like adjusting the focus and the zoom on the camera and taking pictures uh and then getting points for the pictures and then there's also like basically a scavenger mode so it's like you're dropped into a level and they're like hey take a picture that has three film canisters in it take up take a close-up of a of a marker and then it's like get a picture with a telephoto lens that has seven birds in it. And it's really cool. Problem though, is that all I want to do is take pictures, but there's like a timer and there's like goals to hit. And so it, it almost becomes like more about the scavenger hunt where you're like, there's a really cool picture I want to take here, but I can't because I'm on a timer. So I have to go find these three mm-hmm. fucking birds to take a picture of them. And some of them are frustrating and it kind of turns less of a, photography game and more into like a weird scavenger hunt slash platforming game and that's where it dropped me so i basically played it for like an hour and then i spent the last like 15 minutes trying to find this one clue and then i found it but i couldn't do it right because he had to platform up there and i was just like i'm done so it was just like a fantastic idea that was kind of marred by its execution uh still pretty cool it's on game pass david says the soundtrack slaps yeah soundtrack slaps great style Lots of great sound effects and and really cool levels. It's just they should have focused more on the photos. It should have just been Pokemon Snap. Run around, take as many photos as you want. Maybe there's one or two collectibles, but instead the core gameplay is really take very specific pictures of very specific items that you have to find, and that's not as much fun. Uh, This last one. I did it. I played Resident Evil 4. Is Zach muted? I didn't do that. Oh, that was me actually. Uh, are you gonna tell me you don't like Resident Evil Four? Well, let me let me tell you the whole story. You're gonna tell me that. God <laughs> fucking damn. I googled I googled best version of Resident Evil Four, and like literally ninety percent of the posts said the Wii version. The Wii version. Yeah. So I I got the Wii version, and I spent like th- I spent like thirty minutes setting it up, and I started playing it. <laughs> And my problem is not with the game. My problem was with the controls and the age of the game. And I'm not faulting the game for that. I'm sure this game was great when it came out, but trying to go back to that, because the thing is the Wii controls are actually good in that, like pointing at it was perfect. I was just like doing headshots all the time, but then it's like the way it's like pseudo tank controls and it's, it's just wonky enough. And then people were saying, I don't know, Zach, you've got more experience with this. Maybe you can tell me I'm wrong here, but it sounded like if you move, <laughs> if you, it sounds like, it sounds like if you play one of the other versions with a more of a traditional controller, the controls are still wonky. 
Like there's not a version of the game that has like really good controls. Uh, I mean, like uh... that's the problem. I was in the game. I like the story, but I but I just I don't want to do those controls. And those are supposed to be the best, best controls. So I'm like, what do I do? Yeah. Do I try the PC version next? There, I know there's a PC I, HD mod now. Yeah, I'm right I, where I you would, are. Honestly, Ian. I would have said that to you. Uh, I would have said probably don't do the Wii, like because you're gonna have to jump through so many hurdles to play the Wii version. And like, if you don't like motion controls, me. which I fucking don't, so don't just don't. But that's the thing. It wasn't. It wasn't the motion controls. That was the fine part. It's just the way that it's set up and the way that like it felt like you're like locked in with such a small field of view and then you're just kind of shifting and yeah, just and was, just ask have you played the the more modern resident evil games no this is the first resident evil i played okay no well. that's not true i played an hour of seven yeah for a stream so I, I i i would say i'm a big resident evil fan i played five seven eight re uh original one gamecube remake of one remake of two and i haven't touched the remake of three i have tried to play four i recognize it as an excellent game i did not like the way it controlled i have watched full playthroughs of four because i still wanted to get all the information i am mm -hmm. excited for the remake of four so i can finally play it i still need to play the remake of three which i heard is kind of okay but i still uh which i feel like is zach's fears i still recognize four as an incredible game I just, I think it would take yeah. a little bit more for me to get into than it, it definitely just me like down. like it has an it, it honestly for how old it is it is aged pretty well uh you know there's still some problems I definitely think that eight is the better version of Resident Evil four um where like it's kind of pulpy actiony combined with those those yeah. elements of horror and eight also does a lot of really cool things but it that. does fall apart in the end but anyways that's that's neither here nor there um I am. I, I mean hey when four comes out i'm definitely gonna or the four remake comes out i'm definitely gonna play it uh I, I i believe they're at least gonna deliver a pretty great game um i am slightly worried that the the word on the street is that they are changing the tone uh to be that's, a bit more darker and serious that's why i didn't want to wait for the remake i i was yeah. the, the original I, I i agree with you the 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 tone of four is one of like the more fun parts about it of like how honestly kind of fucking goofy that uh leon kennedy is like there's so many lines yeah. that he says that are just ridiculous and like that's not even the shopkeeper i think they'll i i genuinely do think they'll keep the shopkeeper exactly the same yeah. but i am worried about certain lines like uh leon just being like don't touch me bro or like some shit i'm, I'm like it's a fucking zombie like what do you like who the fuck says that like it's so <laughs> funny um and i i feel like that's gonna get cut but i don't know uh we'll see I, I i think the one thing the remakes have shown is that honestly changing the way things are portrayed or done or the tone can be done really well obviously two and three are a bit more dark and, and serious in their own ways like yeah. in, in the original versions so it's not that much of a leap but uh I, I have some fears about how this will be adapted, but either way, there, I'm, I'm going to play. I, I guarantee it'll still be at least like an 8 out of 10. The one thing I was always surprised they kept in 2, and I don't know if it's in 3, you might know, is the like multiple playthroughs thing, where it's like you first play as Leon, then you play as Claire, uh -huh. then you play as Leon again, and blah, blah, blah. Is, there, is that in 4 at all? Is there anything like that in 4? No, 4 is just, uh, it's just Leon Kennedy as the playable okay. character. Uh, they might have... In fact, for the re-release, I guarantee you they'll have some shit where it's like, after you beat it, you can play as a tofu block. Ooh. Because Ooh. Like, they've done weird shit like that for a long time in Resident Evil games. But uh, I can't remember if you play as Ada. Oh, I mean, you do play as Ashley for a little bit, uh, who is yeah. the president's daughter and doesn't have a gun. Yeah. Uh, there's that little like boy. A, the little prince boy the little man yeah uh he seems pretty cool it's the thing where like i it, i have a hard time imagining how they're gonna redo like his character because <laughs> yeah. his character is explicitly like played for laughs isn't he the one talking during the trailer the Resident uh, Evil 4 i thought it was like a deep trailer? manly man voice wasn't i think it? but it sounds with the like trill of like a fancy boy uh, uh, I mean maybe that, I, like I'll have to watch it again because I we we were we were watching it live on stream True. and I think we were kind of talking over it, but uh 
it, it's yeah some some of the stuff is going to be really interesting to see how they retool it yeah. cuz but to, to go back to your point i don't hate resident evil 4 i hate the Wii controls for it and everybody's saying well that's the best version that's the one that's that's worth going back for is a little tough but i will tell you this breaking news I just bought Resident Evil 4 on the PC. Apparently it's on sale for five bucks right now. So I'll give that oh, okay. a shot. Because yeah. I, I was in I was into the gameplay. I was into the story. They even had a little bit of cheese at the beginning. I was into that, but it was yeah. just like 30, 45 minutes with those Wii controls, and I was like, this sucks, man. This sucks. I I actually might pick it up on PC because I was wanting to replay it before. Isn't it on Game Pass? Or like uh, I, don't I don't think, think so. There, and there's a brand been. new uh HD fan remaster for the PC version that just came out recently. That's supposed to be very good. Mm. Um, yeah. Now I want to play it. Jerks. I have it on Xbox. I'm pretty sure I own it already. So I'll just play it on there. Uh, PC does it. Oh, I guess it would use mouse and keyboard. I don't know why. It well, I'm, it, the controls could still be bad, but I'm hoping at least on the PC, maybe there's like a, an any file somewhere where I could tweak the controls to my liking. David's right. The VR version I did hear was very good. Yeah, a lot of people are saying yeah. that's like bonkers but it's, good. But it's Quest 2 only right now, which yeah. sucks. Yeah. Um, wow, that's that's it. That's everything we've been playing. And all the news. Yeah, I'm glad I got to talk about Eastward. I, honestly, from what you've talked about, I remember this game, and it used to be a different game, and now it's this game, and it, it genuinely looks pretty cool. I might play it. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. Go watch Devolver <laughs> Digital. That's all I gotta say. Go watch Devolver I Digital. Need to they watch have so that. many bangers. They've got don't, some bangers in there. Don't watch this show. I mean, like this I, one. I know this you're one? not, but don't. <laughs> I'm not sure, Halucha. Damn, Halucha. <laughs> this, off the, this may have been me. the most off the rails podcast. Yeah, that's and true. Several. I, I honestly, Zach, if you're if you're genuinely upset, I am deeply sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to. I was. Genuinely. I'm over it. <laughs> okay, I, I did not mean to cause any harm. I was just trying to be. No, funny. you're good. You're good. Okay, I'm gonna send you some flowers to make you feel better. No. So just send your. Do you need my, my address? Secretary. I'll talk to you right now. Uh, no, because that's dangerous. Is it, is it one two three Fake Street? One, two, three, fuck you, Will Street. <laughs> There's One a word. street? Fuck you, Will. Yeah. Fuck you, Will. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, it's very weird every time I tell somebody at my address. Yeah, they're really offended. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Only Zach, name is Will. Thank you Seek so much for no being here. <laughs> um, they're very funny, these two. Very funny. Uh, folks, if you didn't know, Zach is from Save Data, the infinitely more popular version of the thing we do. <laughs> Uh, they're over on YouTube and Twitch, Save Data Team. Uh, they used to be called Around the Monitor, and then they shaped up and changed their name. Uh, they also do that sure. show. It's tomorrow, 8 p.m.? Uh, yeah, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Yes, I check your schedule every week. Um, so definitely go tune in to that. You check your own Discord every week, you son of a bitch? No, I don't. I blame Halucha for that one. Honestly, Halucha, I blame you. When there's wow. tags on me, wow. let me know. Let me know, Halucha. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um... Folks, you can check us out this weekend. We're going to be playing some Hell Let Loose. I don't know what we're doing. Something on Saturday. I have an eye exam, so... Uh, probably Hell Let Loose. Probably Hell Let Loose. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we got that. Uh, check out uh, all of our content, subpixelfilms.com. They'll bring straight to our YouTube channel, where you can find all the archives of all the cool stuff we do. Um, what else? Follow me on Twitter at Hunt270. Follow ian on twitter at think gibson and follow zach on twitter at save data zach yeah that's my personal twitter man yeah, i feel bad plug some uh, take us out by plugging some save data stuff yeah plug oh, some just, save data stuff you, you save data team on literally everything youtube twitch uh patreon etsy.com slash shop slash save data team oh, uh, damn. lots of things any yeah get your anywhere any town ohio mug and sue it's your save data team you not the sega font t-shirt damn hear that sega sue them bye <laughs>